This is Net News Network Headline News. For all your national and world news you won't hear on MSM. Well, the Biden administration's spending spree continues. Biden announcing that people who make less than $150,000 a year will have their student loan debt forgiven. The Biden administration announced Wednesday that it will spend hundreds of billions of dollars to pay off at least $10,000 in federal student loan debt for each borrower, despite widespread worries that the move will worsen the inflation crisis. Individuals earning less than, I'm sorry, it's $125,000 a year, or families earning less than $250,000 per year will be eligible for up to $10,000 in debt cancellation, the Education Department said. Pell Grant recipients who met those income standards will be eligible for relief up to $20,000. Pell Grants are typically awarded to students from low-income households to help them cover their college expenses. Nearly 8 million borrowers may be eligible to receive relief automatically because the department already has their relevant income information. In addition, the freeze on student loan repayments and interest, which has been in place since March 2020, will be extended for a final time to the end of this year. In keeping with my campaign promise, my administration is announcing a plan to give working and middle-class families breathing room as they prepare to resume federal student loan payments in January 2023, Biden wrote on Twitter. Education Secretary Miguel Cardone echoed the president's remarks, saying that the student loan debt cancellation would help alleviate the financial burden that has hindered college-educated edu- Americans from achieving their life goals. We're delivering targeted relief that will help ensure borrowers are not placed in a worse position financially because of the pandemic and restore trust in a system that should be creating opportunity, not a debt trap. Quite frankly, the government has created this debt trap by providing all of these college loans to people that probably shouldn't get them and letting these colleges know that the government will pay the loans. You know, it was after the government started doing all these loans that colleges started raising all their tuition prices and creating all these ridiculous programs, degree programs, and convincing people that they need to have these degrees. It's, uh, it's government created chaos as usual. Wednesday's decision comes after months of pressure from a vocal progressive wing of Democrats calling on Biden to fulfill his campaign promise, while the Democrats insist that the cancellation will support Americans who struggle financially. The Republicans question whether it actually helps those in the most need. Yeah, and it really doesn't, you know, because a lot of these kids are in massive amounts of debt. You're talking, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're going to be stuck with forever. And, of course, that was their choice. But $10,000, you're talking about, you know, like community college stuff, not uh, university level degrees or costs. Citing a new analysis by the University of Penn Wharton, the House of Republicans argued that forgiving federal student loan debt will not only cost $300 billion over the next decade, but also largely benefit higher income earners. Americans are already struggling under record high inflation, Republican members on the House Ways and Means Committee argued. Forgiving $10,000 of student loan debt per person does nothing to bring down inflation and will only exacerbate the rising cost of higher education rather than address it. In a momentum survey conducted on behalf of CNBC, 59% of respondents say they are concerned that canceling student loan debt will make inflation worse, with 34% saying they were very concerned about the negative impact on the economy. Survey conducted online from August 4th to 15th among 5,142 adults also found that 30% of respondents do not think anyone should get any student loan forgiveness, while 32% welcome a blanket discharge for all and 34% say loans should be forgiven for those in need. 
The move is also likely to draw a legal challenge over whether the federal government can bypass Congress to offer such a sweeping relief. In a memo released the day before the decision, Cardona said, It is justified under what's known as the HEROES Act, a post-9-11 higher education law that allows his department to provide relief in the wake of a national emergency. Oh boy. Specifically, the 2003 law states that the Education Secretary may waive or modify any statutory or regulatory provisions relating to federal student financial aid for those serving in the military during a war or those living or working in an area affected by a disaster or those suffered direct economic hardship as a direct result of a war or other military operation or national emergency. Well, that is getting super vague with that law. According to the memo, the HEROES Act applies the ongoing COVID-19 national emergency first declared by President Donald Trump in March 2020 and extended by Biden through January 2023. Like I said, this administration is on a massive spending spree. Biden has already spent more than any other president in his short time in office over some $3 trillion on all these various emergencies that have come up. And on top of the student loan thing that he's doing, he's also going to send $3 billion more billion in aid to Ukraine uh, for training. As Russia's war in Ukraine drags on, U.S. security assistance is shifting to a longer-term campaign that will likely keep more American military troops in Europe into the future, including imminent plans to announce an additional roughly $3 billion in aid to train and equip Ukrainian forces to fight for years to come, U.S. officials said. Why is it the U.S. taxpayers' job to train Ukrainian troops when we are suffering ridiculous amounts of inflation in this country and our own shortages and our own problems U.S. officials told the Associated Press that the package is expected to be announced today, Wednesday, the day the war hits the six-month mark and Ukraine celebrates its Independence Day. The money will fund contracts for as many as three types of drones and other weapons, ammunition, and equipment that may not see the battlefront for a year or two. The total of the aid package, which is being provided under the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative and is the largest to date, would change a bit overnight, but not likely by much. Officials said that it will include money for small, hand-launched Puma drones, the longer-endurance Scan Eagle surveillance drones, which are launched by Catapult, and for the first time, the British Vampire drone system, which can be landed off, launched off ships. Several officials spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss the aid before its public release. Unlike most previous packages, the new funding is largely aimed at helping Ukraine secure its medium to long term defense posture, according to the officials familiar with the matter. In addition to providing longer term assistance that Ukraine can use for potential future defense needs, the new package is intended to reassure Ukrainian officials that the U.S. Stand- intends to keep up its support regardless of the day to day back and forth of the conflict, the officials said. This is not our problem, and this needs to be stopped. America cannot afford this right now, and this isn't our fight. This isn't our war. And uh, we need to pull back. In more local news here in the U.S., the water crisis on the West Coast and southwest is heating up. Hydroelectric turbines may stop turning. Las Vegas and Phoenix may be forced to restrict water usage or growth. Farmers might cease growing some crops, leaving fields of lettuce and melons to turn to dust. Those are a few of the dire consequences that could result if states, cities, and farms across the American West cannot agree on how to cut the amount of water they draw from the Colorado River. Yet for years, seven states that depend on the river have allowed more water to be taken from it than nature can replenish. Despite widespread recognition of this crisis, the states missed a deadline this week to propose major cuts that the federal government has said are necessary. And again, the government failed to force harsh decisions and stopped short of imposing the cuts on its own despite previous threats to do so. 
any unilateral action from federal officials would be would likely move conversations from negotiating tables to courtrooms and delay action even longer. The river which cascades from the Rockies down to the deserts of the southwest quenches the thirst of 40 million people in the U.S. and Mexico and sustains a $15 billion a year agricultural industry. But for a century, agreements governing how it's shared have been based on faulty assumptions about how much water is available. With climate change making the region hotter and drier, that discrepancy is becoming impossible to ignore. Lake Powell and Lake Mead, the two largest reservoirs that hold Colorado River water, have fallen to dangerously low levels faster than anyone expected. The decline threatens to disrupt hydroelectric power production and water sent to cities and farms. Though everyone agrees the stakes are high, states and the U.S. government have struggled to reach a consensus on what to do. Well, they're going to have a big problem when they run out of water, and since they don't want to do anything about it, it's just going to happen. And I hope if you live in those areas, you're ready. The river is also tapped by Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming, Mexico, and some tribes, and California. For years, officials have issued warnings about the state of the river, but also reassured people that the system won't crash. That two-part message was front and center this week when the states failed to meet a deadline set by the Bureau of Reclamation for them to propose a 15 to 30 percent cuts to their water use. As the deadline passed Tuesday, the potentially dramatic moment amounted to a shrug, officials said, as they still have faith the states will reach a deal if given more time. It's not going to happen. They're just going to pretend this isn't happening, even though you can see it for yourself. And they're going to continue to say things like this. This is not a situation where people should be concerned about, you know, water running out in days or weeks or even months, but it's very clear this, this entire river system is experiencing something that's never happened before, said Wade Crowfoot, California's Natural Resources Secretary. The cuts would force hard decisions about who has to live with less, water bills could rise, as states tap other sources and adopt technologies such as wastewater recycling to make up the difference. This is going to happen, folks whether you believe it or not, or have all your hopes and dreams that it won't. So I sincerely hope if you live in the Southwest, you are somehow preparing rainwater catchment or something, because this is going to happen, and it's going to cause widespread problems in the Southwest. Food shortages, water shortages, drinking water shortages, power shortages and there's really nothing they can do to stop it at this point this has been net news network headline news for more visit netnewsnetwork.net please like share and subscribe thanks for listening